Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we dive into the groundbreaking work Silent Spring, authored by Rachel Carson. Published in 1962, Silent Spring sends a powerful message about humanity's fallible attempts to control nature through the liberal use of chemical pesticides. With insightful analysis, Carson illustrates how our quest to annihilate unwanted pests using these synthetic poisons disrupts nature's delicate balance, ultimately posing a looming threat to our survival. The ubiquitous spread of these harmful substances has the potential not only to devastate our environment, but also to permeate our food sources and, by extension, our bodies. Rachel Carson, the authoritative voice behind Silent Spring, was a prolific writer and marine biologist and a valuable contributor to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, author of several highly acclaimed books like Under the Sea Wind, The Sea Around Us, and The Edge of the Sea. Carson was an early champion of environmental causes, well ahead of her time. The relevance of Silent Spring remains undiminished in today's era of widespread environmental concerns. Hence, it is a must-read for those passionate about conservation and nature, environmentalists at heart, and individuals concerned about the widespread use and effects of chemical pesticides. So, stay tuned as we unravel the profound insights embedded in this environmental classic here on 20 Minute Books. Silent Spring, the classic that moved the environmental movement. Introduction. Unravel the roots of the environmentalist wave. As Joni Mitchell strummed her guitar and belted out the lyrics, Hey farmer, farmer put away that DDT. I'd rather have bugs on my apples and birds in the trees. She unknowingly echoed the echoes of a powerful movement. The lyrics, woven from the heart of the fledgling environmental movement, sparked a new understanding of our relationship with nature, and many of its profound insights find roots in the ideas you're about to encounter. Though the stories and revelations you'll hear echo from more than half a century ago, they hold a stunning relevance in today's climate, both literally and metaphorically. The warmest years ever recorded have all clustered in our recent history, and our planet's biodiversity and ecological robustness are tested more fiercely with every tick of the clock. As Mitchell's timeless lyrics ring out, don't it always seem to go that we don't know what we got till it's gone. They underline the urgent relevance of what you're about to uncover. In the narrative you're about to traverse, you'll discover. The chilling effects DDT had on robins populating the University of Michigan. Why even seemingly untouched hen eggs can bear a deadly poison and the paradoxical way exterminating harmful insects might backfire. Part 1. Post-War II brought a surge in synthetic pesticides, paving a hazardous path. Most of us grimace at the thought of insects unless, of course, we're devoted entomologists. For farmers in particular, insects are often seen as a bane to be banished from their lands, as these tiny creatures feast on their crops. This universal disdain for bugs led to an explosive growth in synthetic poisons following the end of World War II. These were devised to offer farmers a swift way to annihilate these unwelcome pests. Interestingly, the origins of these poisons tie back to the science of chemical warfare of the War War II era. A host of chemicals, initially crafted for the battlefield, were discovered to have lethal effects on insects, leading to a wave of chemical pesticides. These new creations were aimed at all things considered pests, from weeds and rodents to the myriad insects. Between the mid-1940s to the 1960s, over 200 such chemicals were crafted, setting off a dizzying rise in pesticide production. We went from producing 124,000 to 259,000 pounds of pesticides in 1947, to a whopping 637,000 to 666,000 pounds by 1960, a five-fold increase. These synthetic poisons also upped the ante on lethality compared to their predecessors. Previous pesticides relied on organic compounds like arsenic, 
an extremely toxic mineral that still found use in a range of weed and insect killers as late as the 1960s. However, the toxicity of arsenic didn't stop at pest extermination. It was discovered to carry a carcinogenic potential, causing illness or even death in animals exposed to arsenic-contaminated areas, from horses, cows, and goats, to deer, fish, and bees. The list of victims spanned wide. But the chemical compounds that followed arsenic brought along even more ominous threats. Take dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane, for instance, better known by its abbreviated moniker DDT. Despite being first synthesized by a German chemist in 1874, it wasn't until 1939 that DDT found its calling as an insecticide. Modern pesticides like DDT are unleashed as sprays, dusts, and gases, penetrating the bodies of their targets in all these forms to wreak slow yet deadly havoc. These chemicals strip the body's protective enzymes, trigger oxidation, induce organ malfunctions, and invade cells, a grim recipe for irreversible and malignant destruction. Part 2. The Collateral Damage Chemical pesticides wreak havoc on the ecosystem. The quest to exterminate pests did yield effective solutions. However, much like arsenic's disturbing side effects, these new synthetic pesticides proved to be a double-edged sword. One of the major concerns is how substances like DDT can inadvertently devastate the environment, particularly our water systems. There are countless ways these harmful chemicals can creep into our waters. Radioactive waste from hospitals and labs, poisonous fallout from nuclear explosions, disposal of domestic chemicals from cities and factories, and, of course, the pesticides sprayed on our gardens, fields and forests. While water purification plants can filter out some of these damaging substances, synthetic chemicals such as DDT often evade these defensive systems. To illustrate, a sample of drinking water from a Pennsylvania orchard was found to have enough insecticide to kill all fish exposed to it in just four hours under lab testing. Furthermore, water draining from a sprayed cotton field into a stream proved lethal for fish, even after going through a purification plant. The natural world is replete with case studies illustrating the profound harm these chemicals inflict on animals. Birds, in particular, are precariously susceptible. All around the United States, chemical spraying has grounded birds, rendering them unable to fly, paralyzed, or sterile. Take the tale of Michigan State University campus in 1954, where DDT was sprayed to safeguard the trees from the Dutch elm disease, a fungal infection propagated by the elm bark beetles. However, the spring that followed witnessed an unsettling sight. Robins across the campus either found dead, dying, or rendered incapable of reproducing. To make matters worse, even new migrant birds found on the campus soon shared the same fate. Upon investigating this disturbing pattern, it was revealed that the birds were consuming earthworms, which in turn had fed on the DDT sprayed leaves. Tests confirmed that the epidemic of bird deaths was directly linked to DDT ingestion with the dead bird's tissues bearing high concentrations of the chemical pesticide. Part 3. Chemical Pesticides in Our Food Chain – A Clear and Present Danger to Humans It doesn't take a leap of imagination to comprehend that what's deadly for fish and birds would likely be harmful to humans too. Unsurprisingly, chemicals like DDT pose a grave risk to human health. Yet, in the early 1960s, a pervasive misunderstanding led many to assume these chemicals were harmless. Most were familiar with DDT as a powder used during war times to combat lice that infested soldiers, prisoners, and refugees. As this powder was applied directly on skin and hair, it led to the false assumption that these chemicals were benign. While the powder form of DDT, not easily absorbed through the skin, is significantly less hazardous, the story changes when it is dissolved in oil for use as a spray or gas, transforming DDT into a dangerous, toxic agent. Even minuscule amounts can trigger irreversible harm. 
animal experiments revealed that as little as three parts per million can hamper a vital enzyme in the heart muscle, while five parts per million can cause liver cells to break down. Even though substantial testing was yet to be conducted in the early 1960s to confirm the precise harm posed by chemicals like DDT to humans, the author noted the potentially high risk. In fact, at that time, the average exposure level to DDT was already far exceeding the levels known to inflict damage on the liver and other organs and tissues. Those working in environments with direct exposure to DDT, such as agricultural workers, registered levels of 17.1 parts per million, while workers at insecticide plants showed a staggering 648 parts per million. Surprisingly, even people with no apparent exposure to DDT displayed an average of between 5.3 and 7.4 parts per million. This could be attributed to the insidious entry of this poison into our food chain. Here's how it worked. Fields of alfalfa were sprayed with DDT for protection. This DDT-laced alfalfa was fed to hens. These hens laid eggs contaminated with DDT, and eventually, these eggs found their way to our plates. Part 4. Pesticides. Deadly Impact. Unbalancing Ecosystems and Invoking More Harm Than Good. Given the dangerous impact of pesticides on the environment, you might be pondering over their effectiveness at their intended purpose. Astoundingly, even in their supposed sphere of effectiveness, these chemicals tend to trigger hazardous complications. A significant problem arises from the indiscriminate nature of these chemicals' deadly action. This indiscriminate killing implies that they don't merely eliminate their target pests. They also wipe out natural predators of these pests. Consequently, Pesticides like DDT end up throwing nature's intricate system of checks and balances into disarray, a system that flourishes only with a balanced ratio of predators and prey. The Kaibab deer in Arizona provide a stark example of this system's breakdown. Once upon a time, the deer population in this region existed in harmony with its environment, courtesy of a variety of natural predators like coyotes, wolves, and pumas. However, a misguided campaign was launched to protect the deer, which involved eliminating these predators. Predictably, with their foes gone, the deer population expanded uncontrollably, leading to a scarcity of food. The deer started starving and dying at higher rates than before, causing extensive environmental damage due to their desperate search for food. This is the exact type of predicament that can emerge from using chemical pesticides. Even when they're somewhat effective at killing their targets, they can unwittingly unleash a fresh pest-related issue that didn't exist previously. This exact scenario unfolded in 1956 when the U.S. Forest Service sprayed 885,000 acres of woodlands with DDT to tackle the spruce budworm pest. The following summer, a larger problem surfaced. The DDT had also exterminated the natural predators of the spider mite. Subsequently, the spider mite evolved into a global pest, proliferating at such a speed that they devastated the majestic trees of the Helena National Forest and the slopes of the Big Belt Mountains. Part 5. Understanding our responsibility. Holistic alternatives for a healthier future. You might be wondering how such detrimental chemicals managed to seep into our environment and food chain. Regrettably, when these chemicals were being introduced, particularly in the years following World War II, there was an absence of appropriate tools and government regulation. Chemists lacked the procedures to test for such pollutants, and there were no means to eliminate them from our water sources. As a result, chemical contamination in water went unnoticed and the Food and Drug Administration, along with the Department of Agriculture, rarely followed up to confirm whether our food was being polluted. In the absence of protective regulations, the government frequently initiated chemical spraying projects without conducting sufficient research into potential risks. Meanwhile, pesticide manufacturers conveniently claimed their products were harmless and beneficial. To rectify this potentially devastating trend, we need to be more accountable for what we're using and the quantities in use. Despite the author's concerns hailing from the 1960s, the same issues persist today. 
insufficient research is directed towards healthier alternatives, like biological pest control, and such alternatives are underused. These include mass sterilization of pests and the use of parasites, predators, pathogens, and pheromones to control pest populations and divert pests. Strategies like these not only evade the pitfalls of chemicals, but they are also less harmful to us and the environment. We can no longer turn a blind eye to nature's warnings and the destruction inflicted by mankind's chemical war on pests. Chemical spraying is but one of many ill-conceived attempts by humans to control nature, resulting in dire consequences. It's not just that people are being contaminated. The alarming fact is that most people remain unaware of the lurking dangers and the harmful side effects of pesticides receive scant attention. At the very least, we must stay informed about the chemicals used in our environment and food, along with the associated risks. Furthermore, it's crucial to question the innate human impulse to control nature, which fuels our reliance on these harmful substances in the first place. Final summary. The fundamental message in this book is mankind's long-standing inclination to dominate and manipulate nature rather than coexist peacefully with it has given birth to numerous destructive entities. Pesticides designed to eradicate weeds and pests stand as a prime example. Instead of being a solution, they've inflicted devastating consequences on all forms of life. It's essential to enforce rigid regulations on pesticide usage and, at the very least, familiarize ourselves with their damaging impact. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.